Cheers and welcome to Bitter Reality Brewing. Yes, we're talking about dead space. Dead space, dead space. And we're gonna add some more stuff to it like total capacity that may not really be documented out there, not in the way I'm gonna do it. So you can think at David Hall 158, he is a viewer and he asked me a question based on a comment I made in the Red X IPA because I assumed somebody who told me something was correct. They were off a little bit. He was off a little bit, but he was pretty close to correct based on what he was explaining. Just it wasn't the total big picture, okay? So what are we gonna do in this video? Well, first, I'm gonna leave a calculator down below for anybody who's math challenged. I love math, but I use a calculator too. Better to be accurate and verify everything. I measured everything three times just to verify everything. Started with the Brusilla. But when he asked me the question and he goes, well, no, I don't think that's correct. I was like, wait a minute, I assumed somebody told me something and it was correct. I should have done that. We all know with all the myths that have been debunked in home brewing in the past 10 years, double check everything. So based on all this research, I'm gonna tell you which one had the most dead space, how to calculate your dead space, how much dead space per inch of your fill, I know it's a little weird, and which one has the largest capacity for liquid and grain in its malt pipe. I will tell you, the one that had the least amount of dead space was not the same one who could hold the most. So show me a little love since I spent two days doing all this research, technically three. Like, subscribe, keep sharing, trying to hit 10K by the end of the year, it's gonna be tight. If we do, great. If we don't, so be it, wasn't meant to happen. But here we go. So how did I do this? Well, first, David Hall, 158, he said that this is only supposed to have about two liters of dead space. And I watched tons of videos, even ones I've seen before with Key in it from Keglin. And they even asked him something about dead space in one of those videos. I mean, it was like a whole subject. And it was like he danced around giving a number. <laughs> he never gave a number. But rumor out there is it's about two liters. Kinda. It's correct, but it's not correct. Okay, so first of all, how did I calculate everything? Well, on both systems, I filled the liquid on the bottom until it hit the very bottom edge of the malt pipes, okay? And if you know on the Gen 4.1, it's got that curve, very hard to calculate, so it's easier to do it by total liquid in there. Over here, with the heat exchanger, was 66 ounces, okay? Without the heat exchanger, this displaces about three ounces of liquid was 69 ounces, which is about two liters. So, yep, David Hall was correct on that. It was about two liters, but that's not the whole picture. Okay, that's just the very bottom. Dead space originally was calculated by a mash ton and how much dead space you had underneath the false bottom. The problem is these are all in ones and they're a lot like the old coffee systems where there is a tube inside of a tube and all of that liquid on the outside of that tube is technically dead space because it's not in immediate contact with the grains. That's dead space. <clears throat> it just, it is. <laughs> Maybe you need to rewrite the definition, but that is dead space. That's what this assumed. It wasn't in direct contact with the grains. The liquid on the sides is not in direct contact with the grains. The liquid in your research is not in contact with the grains. So I'm going to assume that you're going to be doing recirculation over here on the anvil. So we're going to add two ounces to make things fair over here to the anvil. If you're not, I still suggest doing a recirculation even if you're pouring slow, dumping, pouring slow. Pour slow is the key. Research slow. So first, we had 71 without the heat exchanger on the bottom and in the recirc. Over here on the anvil, we had 104 ounces on the bottom plus the recirc, 106 ounces. So for the dead space on the bottom, we have, I'm gonna say considerably less over on the Brusilla but that's not the big picture, okay? How did I measure this? Well, I measured the total width of the unit. I measured the total inside diameter of the malt pipe on both units. And I measured from the inside edge of both malt pipes at the very bottom without touching the bottom because I've already had that liquid. That's already, we know how much that is. So taking those measurements, height, diameter, height from inside here, diameter, and then subtracting what's inside of the malt pipe, okay? And I have all these measurements. I'll put them all down below in the comment or in the description so you can try to double check because I measured and I measured and I measured and I measured and uh, just saying, if you're one of those people who is OCD and wanna measure, great. My total width on this was 11.875 inches out 
that's inside diameter of the actual unit. The inside width of the malt pipe was 10.375 or 10 and 3 eighths. And the height inside the malt pipe to the very top, and we're gonna have an exception there, is 17.875 or 17 and 7 eighths inches. I'm gonna subtract some stuff shortly after this because this little hole, you don't wanna have your liquid all the way to that point. You're gonna have it right to the edge of it if you go that full. So we're losing a whole inch here, and I'll explain that in a minute. Over here on the anvil, we have 11.5 total width on the inside, and that's from the edge of the double wall. That's not from the top lip because the top lip's a little wider, but we're not gonna have any liquid up that high. So inside of the double wall insulation, this has a neoprene on the outside, is 11.5. So this unit's a little skinnier. The width of the malt pipe is a little skinnier too. It's 10.1875 or 10 and 3 sixteenths. The total height from the inside edge of the malt pipe all the way to the top of the malt pipe is 20.5 or 20 and a half inches. So it's slightly taller. Like I said, taller and skinnier, a little more wide and stout. Difference is my hole starts at two inches over here. So I have to deduct two inches off of this bad boy. So after doing all of those calculations, my total volume over here was 1,167.99 ounces total. Over here was 1,285.88. So yeah, a little bit more than 100 and almost 120, 118 ounces more over here total, okay? Then I took the malt pipe, did that math, 837.36, 925.93, subtracted that, and I ended up with we're gonna have to adjust this with 2.58 gallons of dead space. Over here, I had 2.81 gallons of dead space. But I'm like, well, wait a minute. I'm never gonna go over two inches in that malt pipe. That last two inches, I'm gonna stop. Over here, I'm gonna stop at one inch. Well, one inch, so for every inch you go up, you have 14.52 inches, or 14.52 ounces of dead space. Over here, for every inch, you have 12.39, so it's a little tighter a little less dead space per inch. So if I subtract the two, that gives me 335.17 ounces of dead space total. If I filled it all the way to the edge of that two inch mark, and that's 2.62 gallons of dead space. Over here on the Brusilla, I have a total, if I'm one inch from the top of the malt pipe, 314.11 ounces or 2.45 gallons of total maximum dead space. So, Yes, the Brusilla wins in having the least amount of dead space because it's 2.45 gallons versus 2.62 gallons, which is approximately 21 ounces in difference. Okay, so you've got a little bit more than a pint glass of difference in dead space. Now, I will tell you, and this is just a little bonus, is that when you're brewing, you have two options. It's a little harder on the Brusilla because they have this lip that kind of blocks it, but some people have mentioned on the anvil using their little whirlpool piece, in between to get some of that water that's been sitting there that's not recirculating to get into recirculation. I just do a very slow lift, a very slow set. Did it on the Brusillo on my last brew once. I didn't do it on camera. I simply lift this up nice and slow and then set it down nice and slow. I was very concerned about this popping out, but I did have the Anvil's small batch adapter in here, which doesn't fit perfect, but it was pretty close to keep it from popping up. Over here, it has little notches that keeps it from popping up, okay? Keep in mind, I did not subtract liquid for displacement of the actual pipes or their false bottoms. So your total dead space may be about two and a half to three ounces less total, total, okay? So that's not a big deal. Now, how is this gonna help you? Well, first of all, if you're doing a big brew, you can just assume that you're gonna have that maximum dead space I just told you about. If you're doing like a half batch or something else, you can estimate how many inches and know that you have an additional dead space of, this is from the beginning of the malt pipe up, not below the malt pipe. You have 14.52 ounces per inch, 14.52, for a total of up to 16.875 in height before you hit the edge of this. Over here on the anvil, you have 12.39 per inch up to a maximum of about 18.5 because you're gonna stop right about here. So if you know it's a big batch, you can just do the math and figure out how much more total dead space you're gonna have. 
which one holds the most grain and liquid? I think the advertising says the Brazil, but are they correct? Well, this bad boy holds 790, 790.51 ounces up to the edge of just before it hits that hole, which is 6.18 gallons total liquid. Yeah, I wasn't gonna figure out your grains. Total liquid, 6.18, okay? Go over here to the anvil. We're at 835.6. Yeah, so we're about 45 ounces more over here on the anvil up to the two inch point. So we've got two inches more space up here versus one inch and that's 6.53 gallons. So not huge, but that's 40, 45 ounces more over here total. Well, you have a little less dead space over here. So it's, like I said, the Brazilla and the Anvil are very, very comparable and they have a lot of differences. And you have to take that into consideration. I mean, you know, are you, which one fits you? I mean, honestly, they're both very cool. They're both 220 volt. Um, I do, they, they make a 110 version over here. You can do a 110 or 220 with a flip of a switch. It does make it a little bit more convenient. They're both low density. Um, they both have different ways of measuring the heat. Um, they do have the little wrapped piece I have sitting around here that you can buy for an additional 50 bucks to help, you know, keep your mash at the right temp. You could use it over here on the anvil. The key with the anvil is it will not talk to this as it will with this unit or upload to the web. So pros and cons in both directions, but I like both systems. I'm still learning the Brusilla quite a bit as you've probably seen when I did the Red X video. I'm expressing any kind of concerns, frustration because, hey, I'm brand new on this one and I'm looking for any kind of help and suggestions and a lot of you have given me great help and great suggestions and I do appreciate it. Just the same as uh, David Hall, 158, definitely gets credit for uh, sending me down this rabbit hole. I'll put all the information down below. I'll put the links to the actual uh, calculator so you can figure that out from there. But yeah, learning experience. I just didn't brew that day <laughs> or days. Cheers, appreciate you. Show me a little love, like, subscribe, keep sharing. Appreciate it. Drinking some Jun. It's like a kombucha with honey and green tea. Cheers.